Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about how you help students create posts um, for their blogs, and I'm going to give you some organizational tips. So having your students blog, it really requires a certain amount of organization on your end. You can't just walk in and tell your students to blog a certain number of times per week or over the course of a grading period. Um, so in order for this to work, we need to give um, the students a certain amount of structure. So that's what I'm going to help you here with today. So one of the things that you have to think about is frequency of posting and I've got two different ways set up here that you can think about it. Um, the first idea is you say okay we're gonna blog once a week for a set number of weeks so we're gonna blog once a week for nine weeks okay that's fine. Um, idea number two this is what I personally do and I'll say a little bit more about this is we do a minimum number over a maximum time span so 12 you're gonna blog 12 times once a week for 12 weeks out of 15 weeks or if you use a nine week model you might say you're gonna blog you have to blog at least eight times once a week for eight weeks out of nine weeks um, and there's a reason to do that okay so um, hold on, let me back up here for a second. One reason is one reason why I prefer idea number two um, to idea number one is that when I say to students you have to blog once a week for 12 weeks out of 15 weeks what ends up happening is they've got this three week window where they don't have to blog and it's not going to hurt their grade okay so if they're sick if they have the flu if somebody dies in their family um, if they just don't feel like blogging okay if they're overloaded with work from other classes whatever they can make the decision about taking a week off now I encourage them to blog once a week for 12 12 weeks and take the last three weeks off right um, I encourage them not to use their time at the beginning of the semester unless it's a true emergency and so what happens is because they get to pick when they want to take time off I don't allow for makeups I don't have um, I don't count late blog posts I don't deal with it they you can't ask me if you can make something up because you have three weeks to manage on your own so obviously you have to think about your students if they're old enough and mature enough to manage something like this um, but I like it because I just there's so much nonsense that I don't even have to deal with okay so we've thought about how you know you have to you've thought about how often you want students to post and then you have to think about okay when all right, so we're going to use here this example of you're going to blog once a week for eight out of nine weeks, and we're going to assume that students get one week free pass and they can they can pick their week. Okay, so you have to tell them what a week is. All right, so I tell my students a week starts on Monday and it ends on a Sunday. Okay, so if we're on week one and it's Monday and then Sunday night comes around you haven't posted anything and then on Monday morning of week two you wake up in the morning and you post something that's nice that counts as your blog post for week two but you missed week one and I don't let people make up their weeks so that's how that works you're gonna have to define it for them define it however you wish this is how I define it I tell my students that they can blog multiple times during a week but that only one post each week counts towards the eight required why do I do that part of blogging is about being part of a community and a sustained constantly engaged community so if I tell my students you're gonna have eight blog posts um, this nine weeks there are kids that might go home and just do one a day for eight days and then be done now they can not technically do this anyways right because you can write a post and schedule it but um, you know to post at a later date but what I'm trying to do here is just say you can't go home and post eight days in a row and then say that you're done for the nine week period all right so I'm trying to get them to constantly be thinking about and engage with their blog and then of course I have here you cannot make up posts you might decide that you're okay with that but for me I've just found it to be way too tricky of a policy that's why I like to give you know some downtime where if a true emergency comes up students can um, decide to opt out of their post all right so what about the content of the posts you're gonna need to make sure that students know what is acceptable to write about okay and you might have to take time in class to generate brainstorm some ideas about what they can write about um, but once they understand what 
you know, some acceptable topics are, I tell my students these things have a purpose that you know your post cannot talk about everything you might have many things to share but I want them to think about what is the main message that they're trying to get across with their post I tell them to decide that first and then start writing um, I want them to know that they're gonna have a lot of interesting ideas that they're just gonna have to leave out okay and those interesting ideas can go for a different blog post I really want them to understand it's better to have a clear focused post than a list of random interesting thoughts so this is a really great opportunity to get your students to work on purpose. Um, number two, remember your audience, okay? Um, remember that you know you're a member of this class, but perhaps your audience isn't solely this class. So when my students write a post, I want them to think about their audience and what kind of information does your audience need in order to be able to understand them. So for example, if students are writing a blog post about something they read in my class, I don't want them to write a post that says, you know, oh, today in class I really liked or didn't like what we read because um, and then say why because somebody who's not a member of the class who didn't do the reading isn't going to be able to engage with that isn't going to be able to understand it they can still talk about what they read and what they thought about it but they're going to have to contextualize it they're going to have to learn how to contextualize it so that people who haven't read what they read can understand their points okay um, I encourage them to read the blogs of others right who um, who they really like and use them as models we talk about that too um, and then the third point here, craft an interesting title. You know, it's not always possible. Sometimes it's better, you know, the ta the um, content lends itself to a more interesting title than others. But I, we talk about it. I ask them to keep, you know, keep it in mind, okay? At least try to write a title that captures the overall point of the post so that um, the readers are oriented so they know what to expect when they read it. And then this last little thing here, keep it to 500 to 1500 words. Okay, and that sounds like a huge range, but that's actually considered the optimal um, writing um, word range for a blog post. Anything under 500 words, you're probably not writing something substantive enough. Anything over than 1500, you might be writing something that's very substantive, but your audience has probably stopped reading. So as you can see, this is really audience heavy. Students really have to start to think about um, an audience and outside of their own little world and outside of what does the teacher want, you know, in order for me to get a good grade kind of a thing. Um, but again, you know, right, there's a range in here and the, um, pretty much everybody now the plat different platforms are going to have an automatic word counter so it's not going to be an issue for them to be able to keep up with that of course you're going to have to think about what makes sense for your students who they are where they are as writers um, this is considered the optimal range but it might be too much right um, it might be that for your students just writing a paragraph is is what is going to be um, depending on their age um, depending on what they're capable of so I'm giving you the information you do what you what makes sense tweak it as it makes sense all right so what's coming up next next video we're going to talk about um, helping students write and respond to comments and how we get that working so that it functions really well